So I grew up in church, like in church, like Sunday was like not an option. My connection with God was pretty much to, to make my father happy. It was like this mandatory thing that we had to pray about, we had to think about, we had to talk about. I knew I didn't have it all together. I knew that my family didn't have it all together, but we sure did walk it out as if we did. You did wrong and you know you did it. You know you did it. Say, I know I did it. I know I did it. You know what I mean? It was like that kind of experience. I go to church, I hang out with my church friends, I do all this, and then I go over here every once in a while to be who I really am. By 18, I was just done. I started stand-up comedy in 96. Every night was just, would be do the show, go get hammered. I would go out three times a week, and I probably put I probably put a medium-sized house up my nose. If I was a rapper, I thought that's what I would be doing for the rest of my life. Uh, this is one thing that I do that people enjoy. I need to figure out a way to monetize this. So yeah, it was, it was all about me. Went to college and just did anything and everything I could because I had freedom for the first time. I would sometimes pray to <laughs> pray to the God that I I claimed to not believe existed. I just did not want to admit that my way wasn't going to work. So I was going to rap battles, I was winning battles, we were doing shows at different places. It, it seems like I, I had a room full of people that were that were cheering me on, but I was alone. I was actually the most depressed and the most alone that I had ever been because I'd left all of my family, everything that I knew, all of my friends behind. Things were caving in. Like I, so the walls were, were moving in on me. I remember my, my sister approaching me. She didn't have a clear objective. She just wanted to let me know that she was there for me. I was just, I just opened up to her and I said, no, things are not good right now. Things are really bad right now. So I end up in, I end up in jail. I'm thinking it's gonna be a short term thing overnight. Uh, it ends up being much more than that and I'm there for five days. I didn't know what else to do other than ask for help from Jesus because I knew in that moment more than ever before that I needed him like to show up. After I got my hair cut, um, we, we went to go get breakfast and he said, hey Sean, when are you gonna look, give your life to Jesus, man? Just God was just in the back of my head. And I remember hearing, I, start, I heard something on the radio and it was, it was about kids being hurt or something like that. And out loud, to the God that I claimed that I didn't believe existed, I said, how could you let that happen? The response I felt was like, well, it's free will. You have your own free will. You can do whatever you want. I forgive you, I love you. I just felt an embrace and I, and I, I haven't been the same since. So coming out of that, a friend that I don't even know well, actually invited me to a church and I just knew immediately I was to like be plugged in there and that was gonna be my new church. It was years and years of my sister's prayer that led me to that, to that encounter with God. But once it did happen, I mean, I, who wouldn't wanna to go to church every Sunday? It was the very first time in LA that I had like real community, real friends. Here's the thought, and fear do not get caught. If you're feeling like you should really invite somebody and don't want to bring them to the party without the correct information, no interrogation, just say, please come. Don't be dumb, no matter where you're from. But this is what I know, that Jesus' love came for you and you can come for them and give a helping hand to woman and man. And then they'll understand when they feel the joy. And then they will see that their life is changed because Jesus came in and it's nothing strange. 